talking a little bit more about the history of the crisis and where we stand now is Ivan Aylin. He is the director of Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute. Ivan has spoken with us many times regarding the Greece showdown. Ivan, welcome back to Rise Exchange as always. Let's go back in history a little bit. Is, you know, crises don't happen generally overnight when they're financial crises. Is there a specific policy or set of policies in a time frame that led Greece down the road to what looks like ruin, like the ruins that they have in Athens? No, I think it's been over time. The, the Greeks have just been financially irresponsible. And they're, they're not the only ones in Europe. A lot of the other southern tier countries, are they're not quite as bad a shape as Greece, but they, they've lived beyond their means. And, uh, you know, I'm here in the United States, and uh, we've done the same, except that we have some advantages that they don't have. So, uh, you know, our uh, profligacy is not coming home to roost quite as quickly. But I think there's a lot of countries that... Uh, you know, have too many social programs, have pensions that are excessive, and their their tax revenues don't cover that. And, uh, you know, this is a problem. You know, and it's interesting because you talk about the United States, and we do have some advantages here, and we've been very critical. Some have been very critical of Greece. We are different because we print money that the world still wants. Is that right? While Greek really has very few, few you know, means here and levers to pull. Well, of course... That's true, but if the U.S. Uh, ever becomes uh, more risky to investors, then I think that uh, you're going to see the bottom fall out of that, too. I mean, you have to, if you have so much financial irresponsibility, eventually people are going to say, well, you know, they have a big economy, but on the other hand, uh, we can't trust them. So then, you, then your uh, advantage uh, falls in just like everybody else. I think it's not as immediate as the euro crisis, but uh, it's down the road a ways, maybe. And, Ivan, you had mentioned basically the policies that were set in place by the socialist government in Greece. And it all was well and good when the economy is going well, but then there was the Great Recession. And what happened there that hit, really, all of the eurozone very hard, but as we could see, Greece particularly hard right now. Well, of course, when your economy goes south, you have less tax revenues. And, of course, we also have a lot of tax uh, evasion in Greece as well. So the tax revenues are down. Uh, you know, the, and a lot of these pension systems and uh, social programs are sticky. And, in fact, uh, a lot of times social programs will increase during an um, uh, recession like that because uh, they're based on entitlement and that sort of thing. So you have your expenses going up and your revenues going down. And of course, uh, that's, uh, that, that uh, puts any country in a bind. But when you have uh, that much debt already, like Greece has, and it's not uh, the international reserve currency, you have mm -hmm. a problem. And some of the other Southern European countries have the same uh, issues. And of course, uh, Greece was spending a lot of money and taking in very few money because even the tax money they're supposed to take in there's been a lot of talk about massive tax evasion. Is that a red herring, or was that really impactful here? Oh, I think it's a, I think it's a, uh, a, a factor. I think, but I also think they're living beyond their means, even mm -hmm. if they collect all the revenue. So I think it's only, if it's only one factor. And I think the the real problem is uh, that the government is spending uh, more than more than. than it's taking in, and and they're going to have to run surpluses to pay down their enormous national debt. And that national debt is really what's dragging their economy, not the lack of stimulus uh, and and the criticism of Germany. Germany for being uh, uh, for making them uh, have an austerity program. That's good for the long term. It's it's. I know the Greeks don't like it because it's short term pain and medium term pain. But in the long term, they got to get rid of that debt, or they're never going to be able to have a viable economy again. Ivan, do you think though that some debt forgiveness may be on the table because when you're so far in debt, you know that does put a real social strain on any country. And we've seen time and time again in history when we saddle governments whether it's their own doing or not, with tremendous debt, it sometimes can turn very ugly. Well, it can, but, of course, if you forgive their debt, that's uh, an invitation to be irresponsible down the road because they know that, uh, you know, they're part of this currency system. So, if they, essentially, the Greeks have a gun to the, to the, e, the Eurozone, and, uh, you know, they're not, uh, you know, that's a factor. There's a lot of politics involved. So, if you forgive their debt, uh, and, you, you know, there may be, you may be right, there may be some of that, but uh, that's a dangerous uh, thing to do because it only invites uh, future irresponsible responsibility. Okay, I've been Elin in Washington, D.C. Stick around. We're going to have you back on a little bit later in the show. Appreciate it. Thank you. And coming up, should U.S. investors start paying closer attention to Greece? But first, 
Great moments in Greek history. You're watching Rise Exchange. Stay with us.